Welcome everybody. This is the moment, the one moment we've been like, look, if you had one shot to blow your mind with some music theory and learn some diatonic chords, uh, we captured a let it slip. Don't let it slip, y'all. My palms are sweaty, my knees weak. No, I'm not actually very knees weak or arms are heavy. I'm actually just really excited. This is going to be super, super fun. Uh, diatonic chords are a lot of... I mean, I can't believe I just did that. Anyway, diatonic chords are a lot of fun. They are the single most important uh, thing that I have learned in music theory. Uh, it is going to absolutely change your world. Um, and it's something I just can't wait for you guys to learn right now. So let's just jump right into it. Um, it's the most important lesson. It's not my favorite thing. My favorite thing is going to be what you're going to use with diatonic chords in the next video. So get excited. We're going to jump in. Diatonic chords, let's go. So, first thing that happens with diatonic chords is, uh, let me give look, look, look at my notes here. Like these are the notes that they have them on school, so you can read them too while um, I'm explaining to you. Um, so basically, uh, when you're in a musical key, your major your major scale is going to set you up in your musical key. So like this is we're going to start back to our major scale again, G major. Um, and what that musical key is gonna, like what that scale will do is put us in our key. So we are now in the key of G major. Um, now, when you're in that key, you kind of want to look at this, like the best way I've seen, I see it for myself is like, I'm in a house. Now I'm in the house of G. So we're in G house. Now the scale is the house. And what diatonic diatonic chords are going to be? They're going to be your furniture. So these are the chords that you're going to put in your house, and they will always work in your house, and they're going to be fantastic. They always go with everything in the different house, the windows, blah blah blah. This is the furniture that is going to be awesome. Um, now these are generated from the major scale. So previously uh, we talked about the major scale, and we talked about arpeggios and things like that, and I briefly touched on diatonic chords, but just a a quick little skim over it. Basically, when we start on a note and then we skip a note and then we play another note and we skip another note and play another note, we're obviously stacking in thirds. Now, if I do this starting on every single note, um, that's the first one. And then, uh, and then back to one. So you can see how I'm moving through these inter intervals of thirds. I am creating like a diatonic chord sequence. So this is going to be very, very uh, nerdy, but this stuff never changes forever till the end of time. Oh, well, I, you never know. It might change music in like 200 years, but for our sake, it will not change. It hasn't changed for hundreds of years. Um, this is how it works. You play the major scale. These chords will always be the same in sequence. They will never, ever, 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 ever change. First chord, G. Be a G major chord. The second chord, A, will be A minor chord. Third chord, will be a B minor chord. So three minor. Then the fourth chord, C, C major chord. Fifth chord, D, D major chord. Uh, sixth chord, E, E minor. And then the last chord is going to be a diminished chord. Um, I like to play the minor seven flat five. Hold on a sec. There we go. I never play a normal diminished chord. So the seven is diminished. So that is a F sharp diminished chord. And then we come back to the G major. So if you're wondering what's happening here, I'm playing a note, skipping a note, playing a note, skipping a note, playing a note in the major scale, creating a major chord, one major. And then I go to my next note, A, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, play a note, A minor. And then the same thing here. Over here. Then we got. Then we got this. Oh. And then back to here. So we got one major, two minor. Sorry, we got G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, and then F sharp diminished, and then G major. Sorry, every time I play the F sharp diminished, I'm like, I haven't played this thing in forever. Oh my God. Um, you do not need to be playing diminished. All you really need to remember is one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, and then six minor. 
Uh, the seven diminish is not typically used a lot in pop songs. Um, there are clever ways to do it. We use like what we call the minor seven flat five. And the only song I'm telling you right now, the only song I know that is like really popularized it really well is going to be like, uh, you know, Maroon 5, This Love. And they go. And then they go. And that's the only time I have used it really in a pop song. There's other examples that you can see in 80s music and things like that. But typically in pop music now, they really keep within the diatonic chords. They try to keep it super simple, super, super simple. They let production, they let melody um, and lyrics kind of like carry. Uh, so harmony wise, we've kind of stepped away from that, that beautiful era. But let me just go over my notes really fast. So I haven't mucked up at all, but okay, cool. There we go. So we're all good. So basically the diatonic chords, that's all it is. These are the chords that are going to fit in the key. Um, so if I'm in the key of G, anytime I play a G chord, we good. If I play an A minor chord, we good. Play a B minor chord, we good. Play a C chord, we good. Play a D chord, we good. Play an E minor, we good. Nice. Now, if you've been doing our beginner guitar course or anything like that, you would know that these chord shapes that I've given you, I did not give them to you for no reason. A G, an A minor. We haven't done a B minor yet in the beginner course, but that's the next one. And then you got C, D, E minor. So these are all the open chords that you use in a diatonic scale. And um, it's funny that some of these chord progressions are all the same. Brown Eyed Girl. You know, uh, shallow E. So we're just using all the chords that you would normally hear in normal songs. Chicken fry. Sweet Home Alabama. So these, these, it's just... It never ends. Fresh eyes. Oh, that they do like. Um, fast car. So you've got a C chord, G chord, E minor, D. Like, there's just. It never changes. It's pop music. It's. It's blues. It, it, all of them are pretty much the same. Oh, blues is a bit different. They do a couple of cheekier things. They add the blues scale, which is fun. But diatonic chords are pretty much the bread and butter of all pop music. That is what's happening. When you're listening to songs and you're like, why in this song, when it starts with the G chord, why would they go to a C chord? Well, because the fourth note in the sequence is a C. So if I'm in the key of G, the fourth note I'm going to play is a C, and the C is going to be a C major. It will not be that. It will not be a C minor. If I'm playing a G major scale, and I go, and I go, I'm not going to go. See how that sounds wrong compared to? It doesn't sound. See how that sounds wrong? Um... So that is all diatonic chords are. We're playing through our major scale, which you guys have been checking out and you're getting a hang of. And these are all, all the notes that consist in it. So we're going to do a quick recap. So remember, first note of the first note of the scale of G, one, that's number one, is going to be G major. The second note is the A. And it'll be A minor. The third note is B. B minor. Fourth note is C. C major, fifth note is a D, D major, and then the sixth note, E minor, so six minor, and the seventh note, F sharp, uh, oh my god, <laughs> someone has to clip this, the useless law on can't play a diminished chord, uh, F sharp diminished, bam, like, and then you're back to the beginning, so we got... And then, bam, done. 
that's all diatonic chords are. So one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, and then seven diminished, and then back to one major. And that is all pretty much majority of pop music. And we're going to be able to play a boatload of songs in the next video. I'm about to give you the true unlock. Now, this system that we've put into place can be moved anywhere on the fretboard. You're about to understand why this is so broken and amazing. If I play in A major, we know that the, a, the scale that we learned can move anywhere on the fretboard. So if I start over here, we've got A major. So we've got A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, F sharp minor. So I'm in the key of A now. One major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor. So that is essentially all diatonic chords are. They're the chords that exist within the major scale you're playing in, and they're all the chords that will always sound right. Um, in the songwriting course, we will discuss how you can manipulate these in a way, if you understand the diatonic chords, you can manipulate them in a really clever way of understanding what chords create tension, what chords don't create tension, the orders that you can manipulate them, because there's there's not a lot of options when it comes to what order you play these chords in. You can be clever, but they're going to do one thing. They have a they have like, or not one thing, but they might have like a, a very limited amount of purpose. If I play a five chord, this chord needs to go so it needs to resolve. It has like this huge need to resolve or you do like a deceptive version. You see how I do that? Um, it needs to be moving down. So it, they, these chords have a certain characteristics once they're, once they're placed inside a key. Um, and so understanding what a one chord can do for you or what a four chord can do for you or a five chord, um, that's... That's going to be in the songwriting course, but th this is the the big bread and butter when it comes to theory. It's just like, ooh, if you can get this and you understand what's going on, oh, it is just monstrously good. Understand that this diatonic chord sequence, this is something that we really get into. It's like harmony one, harmony two, Berkeley. Um, so a lot of people really sucked at this for a long time. Like I said earlier in the beginning videos, this is practical music theory. Um, a lot of people don't really learn this. Some people never learn it in their entire career. I know professionals who have no idea what this is, especially in the next video when we talk about numbers. But it is, um, it's challenging. Like I said, simple concept, really hard to implement and memorize. So really just have fun with this. Now you are exposed to it. You can start to think about it. Like the best way I would, I would tell you to do this is if you are going to go and play a song, or like say you are playing songs, Start to think about like, okay, well, what key am I in? Am I in the key of G? Okay, if I'm in the key of G, I play a G chord. That's the one chord. Oh, and then this chord plays a four, like it plays a C. Oh, that must be the four chord that Lauren was talking about. Um, you can work through your major scale and be like, oh, where does the C fit in? You know, G, A, B, C. Oh, it's number four. So then number four is meant to be, I think, okay, it's a, sounds happy. So it must be like a major chord. You already know it's a C major because you probably played the C major in that song, but you can be like, okay, this is the theory behind all the music that you play. Um, and if you're playing a song who do that does a bunch of fancier stuff, uh, then we will get into that later on. But really, that's kind of what I want you guys to touch on. Um, just that is diatonic chords. They are kind of challenging, but uh, it is so awesome once you really, really get the hang of it. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys so much for going through this uh, course so far. I'm absolutely loving talking about it. I thought this was going to be like a really not fun course to do, um, but uh, it's turned out to be really cool. So I can't wait to see your feedback and see how you guys go. I would love to see you guys absolutely killing it in the content and posting videos of you guys uh, figuring it all out. So I'll chat to you guys very, very soon, and I will see you in the next video where we talk about numbers. Oh, yeah.